So of course I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I have pink eye from a kid, right? Yes. Ew, ew, children. And then, um, <laughs> and then I did one of those like online doctors, like where you like talk to the nurse via, and they give you a prescription, which I mean works most of the time, but if it's not what you think you have, it doesn't work. It doesn't all. work at all. So then I went to an eye doctor and he was like. I need you to put these very powerful drops in your eye every 72 minutes for the next 72 <laughs> minutes. Well, that is specific. For the next like 14 days, and if you don't, you will go blind and your eye will fall out. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'll do it. Seven. Yeah, it was, it was probably closer to like hour and a half. But yeah, still. I know, but still, it's a little bit just put the timer. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay, 850. 850. Well, we can wait a little longer. Yeah. I don't know where, how many breakout sections we have, but... Well, this is the only one I care about. We'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, just be into it if it's just three of them. I feel confident I will get all my questions answered. Yes, okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> my son went and asked me, he's eight and a half, right? He asked yeah. me if, um, if what, what would happen if he had a big party? Right, without my permission, because he's eight and a half. And, and he said, would you ground me? And I said, yes, I would ground you. And he said, what if I have an intimate gathering instead? <laughs> he used the word intimate gathering? It was on Phineas and Ferb. Yes. I thought he was a genius, and then he's like quoting Phineas and Ferb. Okay. <laughs> yes, Phineas and Ferb is great. Yeah. I learned about aglets. It's what? The, the thing at the end of the shoelace, it's called an aglet. Really? On Phineas and Ferb? Yeah, they have a whole song about it. Oh. I knew about aglets when my dog chewed them off. And those, <laughs> those little classic things at the end of your shoelaces called? Because yeah. I need to get more of them? Yes. Did you just replace the shoelaces? I ended up replacing the shoelaces once I figured out they didn't just sell a little plastic. Bits. Correct. Yes. I mean, I can't imagine that they would. I, I, it's not something that's ever come up until your puppy chews them off. <laughs> He's the canvas rep for this area. Oh. I'm just saying. Hi, Eddie. How are you? You're always so nice to me. Well, <laughs> I am very charming. <laughs> an adorable pessimist. I'm an adorable pessimist. Somebody called me that the other day. It's quite sad. <laughs> well, then, I think we should get started. Yeah, um, so, let's see. So, Tanya, I met. Jackie. Jackie with an I. Yes. And I said, with a campus account. I haven't met you. Hi there. Nice to meet you. With uh, Oregon State. Yeah. The campus, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Ryan has a connection there, and then this is Eddie. I'm Jacoba Bahunin. Uh, I'm with City Labs. Michelle Muldowney Stevens. She's our training and support manager, also with City Labs. I'm uh, yes. Which campuses are the other two? So Oregon. Oregon State. Big Mountain. No. Nope. <laughs> Big Mountain. Oh, Big Mountain is the last name. I know. I saw it yesterday. Blue Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Pierce. Pierce. Uh, Pierce College in Washington State. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Now you're friends. Now we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, so City Labs, we have we have tools that sit on top of Canvas that that help improve the Canvas building experience. Uh, and so, um, as part of our sponsorship for this conference, uh, we got a presentation, and I thought it would be better to have a customer show you around than have us up here and be car salesmen. So, um, so Ryan, yes, I will give you the time. Everybody, please feel free to ask any questions you yep. have. Uh, I'm a negative, O negative blood type, just in case that comes up. And, um, okay. Yeah, uh, my name is Ryan Gates. Uh, I'm with the third largest virtual school in Oregon. Uh, it's called Baker Charter Schools, the Baker Web Academy. Baker Charter Schools is the, the big name because we have some other schools underneath us. <coughs> and I'm the tech director. And we partnered you know, with, with Canvas and uh, we partnered with City Labs uh, after we went through a process of looking at our courses. And so we you know, wanted to streamline the course design and have some things that came up. So we're just gonna go through our process of where we came to and how we got to City Labs. Um, and we have, uh, all of our students have to get online because we are a virtual charter school. By law, we have to have 50% of our content online. And so we have 2,100 students and about 100 faculty that deal with those students in an online manner and 1,500 different courses for, because we go K-12. 
that we have a lot of courses that we have to build out. <coughs> it's uh, four core courses for elementary school, five for middle school, six for high school. So you can imagine all the different varieties we have to have. And so in April 2018, that's when we uh, joined with City Labs to take care of a lot of those uh, issues that we had um, just internally. Uh, so uh, we've been focusing on our why. That's our superintendent's message to us is our why. So we started looking at um, our why as to why we switched to City Labs while we were looking at it. And uh, we wanted to streamline the course design because students and parents were getting confused. Uh, because of a variety of reasons in, in our course design. And they couldn't find the information quickly and in an efficient manner. And in another class, it would be in a different spot. So it was not helpful for the student and parent experience. And also staff were adding elements in places where we didn't want them to, and they were designing things in a way that it, it just didn't make sense. So that, that was our why as to what we were doing here. Uh, so, things that we've seen. Frequent design fails. We have the scroll of death, no universal design, too many clicks, and then accessibility issues. Uh, scroll of death, I know it's really hard to see, but you can just see it's just, you're scrolling down. I, I don't know how many of you have seen that before in the design, where you just scroll, scroll, scroll. That's what we've seen. And they all, it's just a big wall of text going down to the content. And we have a, we had a couple of classes that were like that, not too many. Thankful Canvas that removes a lot of the scroll of death, as we call it. Um, and But it's still there at times. Uh, and there's no images to break it up, and just lots of content. Uh, so this is one thing that we saw. We also saw there is no universal design. We have AC, English, 3A on the left. We have Algebra 2A on the right, and that you can see is not set up the same on the home page. So we didn't have that universal look. I went, took my master's from the eCanvas at Oregon State, and it all looks pretty similar. So that was kind of one of our driving forces is, you know, you get on, I knew exactly where to go in each class. Um, and, uh, but our home page, we wanted to make it for us, and that's what we were seeing. Um, and then, too many clicks, so there's a lot of, uh, I didn't find one really, uh, I didn't find a perfect example, but when you, when you start to click and you have to click multiple times, we want the student and the parent to be able to click twice, that's it, to get to where they want to go. Any more than that, then it just gets lost. So, and then there's accessibility issues. So you're looking at these two pictures, one is accessible for a visually impaired student and one is not. It's very hard to tell. Any ideas where society is the visually in, for the visually impaired? I'm going to be honest and say that I can't actually read that very well. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's hard. <laughs> it's just I'm far enough away. I'm sure yeah. it's as close as I can see it. it I mean, there's just a couple cues. So this, <laughs> look here. So that is one cue mm -hmm. to okay. tell. So that just between that, just that bottom where the numbers are and where it's not, which one is the accessible one, which one's not? The right side is the accessible one. Yeah, because it has the number. Photo yeah, and then it has a photo description, so it has a caption on it. Uh, and then instead of saying in blue, it has required listen. So it says required in blue. Oh over here, so just the name, email is required versus required behind it. And, and But finding that right. for a staff member that, I mean, and, and telling a staff member, hey, you gotta make sure your captions are always you know, there. You gotta make sure that, you know, you have to have contrast, or if you're gonna use blue, you can't, you gotta have, you know, there's a wide variety of things that you have to look at for accessibility. And it's hard uh, to do. So those are the other design fails for us that we found. I don't know what you, you guys are all using Canvas, I assume, since you're here. Um, what other things that you, have you guys seen that maybe, you know, why are you looking at designing or streamlining design? Is there anything that you guys have seen that 
kind of comes up sometimes. Yeah, yeah, files. Yeah, I've seen a lot of that. Yeah, lots of it. And empty files are full of junk files, yeah. right? Yeah, bad links, things like that. I know there's a link check that the canvas has that's good. <coughs> um, there's a wide variety of things that happen. I know I'm constantly struggling with making my tables accessible. Yeah. I use tables a lot to, to organize information to make it easy to read. Yeah. And unless you put the information in the table, for, they can't be read by screen readers. And then you have to do that manually, and it's such a pain that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I... We, we have a tool for that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's it. Yes, accessibility and all those things is very true. Um, so, again, uh, other things that we ran into, um, we, yes, you can put it in a CSS or a JS file, and I, at my school, we're small enough that if I'm the tech director, I'm, I'm it. Um, I don't want to go through, my coding skills aren't up there, so... Uh, we don't have that. Uh, we can't modify due dates in bulk for the canvas. And um, creating course took a, quite some time because you have to do it individually, each assignment. Uh, and then students and parents were getting confused because we had a wide variety of, of courses, setups. Um, so that's where the, 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 Giphy, the GIF came in for definitely lots because that's what our students and parents felt like. They were just going around looking at trying to figure it out. So we came with the uh, City Labs, and um, this was what I just did a search. I was just looking for something online and stumbled across their website and started looking at it. And uh, these are the things that they have uh, available. And we're using Design Plus uh, in the process of using the other three to get set up because uh, we just uh, started looking at that. So they are here to help the experience for our, our students and parents. You may have heard of Design Plus, formerly called Design Tools, yep. or also Kennethware. That was when it was an open source. Um, so it's now something that we like to Yeah. So um, what we did, was what we were looking at is uh, all the things on the right is what we wanted, is the create and update content easily, rapidly build it, create the courses in minutes, not hours, at least the just the bare bone, the things besides the content, and then also be the ability to update the existing content, then to design the courses uh, with the accessibility in mind, and then also be able to enter advanced HTML without having to know the code in, uh, you know, being able to type the code yourself. And like, you know, it says that it would be a total nerd. Oops, oh my. So, this was our course syllabus before. It's just very light, very, it's just basically, I know it's very hard to read, the date and then all, all the assignments or pages that are listed on there, that was it. Uh, and this was what it turned into afterwards is our, our get help page, but our course syllabus also looks like that, and I'll show you in a little bit. But you can see that there's a big difference between the two. And then this was our another course page before, the home page. And then that's the home page after. So that's the same course, computer programming, and it, it's a different look. So now all of our courses look like this and have that feel to it. And then again, an assignment before, that text heavy, just down, and then another assignment before with the poem, and then the assignment now. With, these are tabs, it's hard to see, we'll go through it, but it has tabs okay. with the information on there. So there, that's what we've been looking at, is, is getting it in a way that, it, and that's just one spot. So you have to scroll, I mean, I had to make that big, it's on a huge monitor, so on a tiny Chromebook that we give to our students, they have to scroll down, and then again, you have to scroll down, and it's not even done. So here, it was just one little spot, and they just clicked the tab over. And then uh, another, some content after, so this is a quick check. In the quick check, it allows you to have two question, uh, question and then two options to pick on. 
And then, so, it, what does that describe? Well, that's the associative property. So if they clicked here, it says, that's great. You saw that it groups. And you can do either or. So these are embedded, uh, right, but they don't speak to the gradebook. Yeah. Because we don't want to touch any data from FERPA students, yep. nothing, right? So it it's doesn't just a report. Quick check in the content as you're going through, you just put it up there. Yeah, yeah, it's in it's in the page. So it, it's in the when you're putting in the content, it's just one of the options to put it in an advanced element. Mm -hmm. We can show you. Can you go back? Oh, you have a Yeah. So it says. <laughs> oh, I can I can show you. I can oh, okay. Because I'm fascinated by the quick checks because I'm going. There's so many places halfway through a lecture I'd like to drop in a quick check. Yeah. Sure, like yeah. don't go forward unless you yeah. this part. Is there a thing that says go? We if you if you didn't get this right, go and. Yeah. Well, no. This? That that this is what I whatever I want to type right, in. Right. Okay. So so I just took, typed this in, and then uh, you, you it has the answers, and then on the side it says which answer is the right answer, right? And that does the red or the green, right? And so then it says okay, you almost got it, but it, yeah, you, yeah, okay, yeah, I got it. And okay, then I get it. Reread this, or go here, or right. yeah, <clears throat> lots of things like that. You can also, um, as you have quick checks in the in in the page, uh, you can make it so they have to answer before they can move on by like hiding the. Right. The next yeah. button. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then this is this is called a, a, a pop up, right? So for for uh, in this it has the the text and then it has a link there, and instead of linking out to something, it actually just pops this up, and then has the information. So distributed property looks something, you know, you take through and then have it and then it links to an example of it. Now there's also a mouse over tooltip where you just mouse over and it just pops the thing up without having to click. There's two two options there. So this is all things in the content that, that we've put into and have things pop up. Um, and we can I'll show you a little bit what the design tools that looks like what we've been using and everything. So um got lots. Well, I just and then the internet broke Ooh. again. It's yeah, probably the case. So, uh, what I wanted to show again is that's the before, and then this is the template that we came up with. So now we have, and again, as designed by going to a college course, it was the same thing that we we'd seen, and it it was branded the same, and it looked the same, and we got to choose our colors. And we just sent Seed Labs our colors and said, this is the colors we want. And they did, the, did through it. And then we designed a template that just drops into it. Uh, we have a little bit more, our staff does a little bit more of the editing than maybe some other, uh, like the, the higher education uh, you know, might have. But so they have to edit, enter their picture, they have to enter all that information. But now it, it's, they're going to be the same. So every class a student goes to has the teacher's information right underneath, and then a link to the syllabus, which looks like this, and has our this top portion is uh, institutional. So it reads it from an institutional syllabus. So staff can't change it at all. And it, so I just need to go to a certain page on Canvas and edit it, and it changes it for everybody. And, and that's set up in a course, right? Yeah. So, our, so mm -hmm. Design, Design Plus is set up in a Canvas course, and you can make modifications in that course to then edit the, the templates that you then have. So right. this information is actually pushed by the, by the academy, uh -huh. so it automatically populates yes. everyone's Canvas course? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and you, there's multiple things that you can do that with. Um, we just chose to do the uh, syllabus this way, and there's other things. Uh, the other thing that's pushed out is that those color schemes and the theme, which you can then go change. Um, so we, we decided to just have those four, um, and then it's an expander. It's called an accordion, and it just they just click to expand, and we say that on just on the first one, and then the course grading policies, which varies from course to course a little bit because, you know, sometimes it's 25% projects, a variety of things like that. So the, the staff are the ones to take care of that portion. Um, and then it goes through there. 
Um, and that's what we've done with our syllabus. And then for, um, again, two clicks, they just click home and it comes back. And we had to get help. So in an online environment, they have to find ways to get help themselves. And we're trying to find a way for them to get the help they need on math, because that's a big uh, spot for us that students struggle in, is math online, because independent learning of math is, is difficult at times. So we found ways to, we ne it's called nesting, we did an expansion, and then tabs. And now they can click tabs, and then find their, uh, you know, all the tutors, math tutors that we have. And then as the, this content goes out, then the students are able to know that I can always go pick, get help and go and find the information I need. So, and then we've added a lot of other things, tech help, things like that. Then the other thing that we were, we, uh, the staff, was super excited about is what we call is the multi-tool. And the multi-tool is what's really helped them um, take care of quite a few things, uh, and especially this, this one right here, is the due date modifier. So I picked a course that I just helped out. Uh, it's Florida Virtual Language Arts. Um, and when you click, when you try and edit the due date, have you guys tried to edit due dates for assignments? Yeah. And it's individually, right? Okay, so and it's like the least fun thing of your life. Yeah, so due date modifier lets you set blackout dates and then come down to the bottom and it's gathering the assignments. And then I don't know how fast the internet is here with Not. everybody on it, but it'll gather the assignments and lets me bulk update the course. So, what we've found is that, um, that People are creatures of habit, right? If you if you want an assignment due every time at 11:59, you can put yep. that here. You can set your blackout dates so that you don't forget if you have a, a vacation coming up because we all go on vacations, right? No, um, or like a yeah. um, holiday, school holiday. So you can just set that up at the beginning of of you the set course. Set the course start date and end date come from it. Yeah, I'm just setting <laughs> blackout dates. So fall break, winter break. All those things, you can set the default time and you just say, I always want to do at 10 p.m. and then you set it. And then also there's a uh, one other spot where you can change it by um, number of days. So if for some reason you're like, oh, I was off by one day on everything. You can actually set it um, bulk updates. Yeah, that's right. And you can just adjust the uh, days by plus or minus days. You can just say, oh, I need to move everything up one day instead of going through and clicking. You, you do it. So I actually I imported the course content from the previous course wrong and I was had all the spring dates still. So I just did the math and found that it was 172 days and I just did 172 days plus and then it shifted, and then I realized I was actually one day too far, and all the due dates were on Saturday. So I just did negative one, and it moved it back to Friday and Wednesday. So, so those are spring break. You need to push everything out a week. Week, yeah. yeah. So those are some things there. In the most recent release, there's also an uh, an, uh, um, an announcement schedule. Yeah, yeah, that was so. down at the bottom too. Yes. So let's do. Uh, doo -doo. Let me go get a, the test course that I've been playing with, and we can show you some of the things that happen and what it looks like. Oops. All right. So this is the distributed property that I, I threw up there. Um, and it, it just shows that you can click one or the other and you can add in or whatever you want there and then for to edit uh, it comes up and then there's design tools you can hide this or have it 
open for anybody to use. We currently have it hidden and only the design team can get to it. Um, and, and there's two ways to do it. You can either launch automatically launch it, but you can get in and <clears throat> there's a lot of things that we can we can go through. Um, so when we so when we install, yeah. we ask for your colors. So we give you we we customize your color palette to fit your branding. Uh, we also ask for some banners that go on that first home page if you want us to um, add those yep. prior to the install. And then, uh, like Ryan said, this this uh, is the rich content editor tool that pops out. Um, and uh, like he mentioned, when we install, we can either like limit it to uh, groups to user IDs, we could, uh, or just simply hide it. And hiding it is the most popular way uh, because then as you're rolling it out, you don't have to maintain who has access, that sort of thing. So you have to teach the people uh, the shortcut, but that helps you sort of scale yeah. it. So what I wanted to show is the accessibility. I, I only have one thing here, but right now it says that there's the heading outline is not accessible. Um, and it, it'll say headings indicate. So um, it's saying that I need to change it. So I need to recheck the headings or change the heading to a different contrast or things like that. And it, it'll do that for everything. And uh, it also has the image check and then the link check and think there's no links in there, but it goes through that. So. The link check isn't um, the same as the, it's a, an additional link checker. Canvas already tells you about broken links, right? But this is one that tells you your links for files and are not um, do not include like the, the appropriate content. So it's not like link click here, link click here. It's like link visit the syllabus, right? So for screen readers, they don't have to jump all over and do all of the click here. Yep. Okay, so uh, that that's what we've been through. I know I went through that really fast. I thought it was going to take a lot longer for some reason, but that's probably because I talk so fast. So questions that you guys have, have seen from, um, uh, you know, what, what we went through or things that we've done to take care of some of the things that we have for City Labs. Would you be interested in like seeing, um, I mean, like Michelle, like go through and like scaffold a course? and use the module builder to see what yeah the that's like. the one thing that we have yeah use also as module builder yeah yeah, yeah. okay yes yeah so um it went from a lot of confusion to you know the canvas is we don't like canvas we don't like canvas to most of them 70 percent say that they they now don't mind using canvas and it's satisfactory to you know uh, a good experience so, okay, so you basically saw some significant gems yeah and what about yeah. the fall retention completion rate did you notice it was a big impact on what your students were successfully completing the courses uh, or, or more just accessing the tutors mm -hmm. yeah we saw a de definite jump in accessing the tutors because mm -hmm. right? you know now they're not having to go to our website to then go find the, you know find the, the staff information. Um, our tutors so much so that we had to add uh, two two more tutors. Yeah. So and then our completion rate did go up. Um, oh, what was it before? Uh, we have a ninety three percent course completion rate now. Um, I don't remember what it was before because it's been a little while. But it, we did definitely see a, a jump in, in satisfaction. And because, and, and especially for the, the parents of the younger kids, they're the ones that are doing all the clicking for the K through three. Kids. Oh, I see. Okay, because I was getting like, you kept talking about the parents, and I said, what do the parents actually do? Right, yeah, because so we're, we're, on, we're K 12. Right. So, okay. so we, have, we have that population where the, the kindergarten through fourth grade. You know, it's, it's the parents that are doing a lot of the going in, submitting the, the assignments because they take pictures of their workbooks. Because they're actually not, we have workbooks and then we have content online because 50% has to be online at that age. And then as we get to 6 through 12, it's all online and then it's all the student driven. So that's why it's students and parents that we, we work I understand with. That. Yeah. So for us, um, you know, that, that younger age, the parents were, if the parents were confused, then, you know, it, it just it was not good. And students can usually generally figure it out, the older students, but even then, they were still like, where is that information? You know, 
wait a minute, the ten percent of my grade was this, but I didn't even see that, and it's like you know somewhere else, and even the teachers of those you know students that are helping were like, uh, I I couldn't find this. Where is this? And so a lot of that was that. There's also um, so we've had a couple of of groups do various studies uh, based on um, student outcomes. Uh, one of them was done by Utah State University, which is where the tools come from, right? So um, they ran a study about the impact of Design Plus on courses taken by uh, first-generation students and those improved um, experiences. Uh, there's also one um, that I can give you from uh, University of Colorado Boulder. Um, and uh, they ran a pilot and asked you know, their faculty uh, to participate to attend some sessions to meet face to face and do a lot of design work together and then and there and then they publish the data afterwards so um, so while we don't do it at city labs you know as like a study there are plenty of, of documents that exist from our customers who have successfully done so okay so with the um, multi-tool the first thing you're going to do when you build out a course so I was an instructional designer at Utah State and we'd have a faculty member come in in the morning um, to meet with us and we'd meet with them for about an hour or so and get an idea of what they wanted in their course and then it would take us all afternoon to a couple of days to get that shell built out for the faculty member now the faculty members coming in and they're walking out with that shell already built so the way you start is with the template builder and this is where you think about those pages that you want to be reoccurring in your courses so in this course we're going to build um, we're going to have uh, an overview to each module. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not used to this. <laughs> My keyboard is so much smaller. An overview, if I can type it all. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and create that template page. Um, each module is going to have uh, a lab assignment, a group discussion, and a end of unit quiz. Minus the spelling errors. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the With keys luck. are so far apart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just to, there we go. All right, so then it's going to list all of the um, all of those templates down here and then we can start building them out. So we're going to go ahead and build out that overview page. It's going to open it up in a new screen and have it ready for us to create this page. And with the tools, we're going to choose a theme for the page. So with Design Plus, you get a number of different themes. I'm just going to go ahead and select one here. And then we're going to add in some content blocks. So on this overview page, we want an introduction to the week. We want a list of readings for our students, maybe some video lectures that they're going to view, and then a section that lists out the assignments for the week. Um, we can also add in our own custom content blocks if we want to. Um, for now, we're just going to uh, go with this. I'll go ahead and save. Yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying because it's smaller because it's on the, the projector. So just right, yeah. All right, so this is what our template is going to look like for our weekly overview. And you can do the same for all the other. Yep, go ahead and build them all out for the sake of time. We're going to say we built out all of those and then we can go to the next step which is the module builder so for the module builder we can say we want our modules to be called weeks we want uh, this is just a really short course we're gonna have three weeks three modules starting at number one um, we're going to say we want an over or a page which is going to be based off the overview template that, that we just created and that page is going to be called overview we want a discussion it's going to be based off the group discussion template we created and it's going to be worth say 30 points displayed as a points value to our students a assignment again based off what we created before Submitted online, this one's going to be worth 50 points, and again, displayed as a points value, and an end of unit quiz. So this is, in general, what we want to show up in each of our modules. We're going to go ahead and generate that module list, and it's going to break it down for us. It's going to create an outline. So now we have weeks one, 
two and three, and this is where we can fine tune those weeks. So let's say week one, we don't really want a quiz. It's the first week of class we decided we don't need that there, but we do want an extra discussion where our students are going to introduce themselves to one another. Maybe we want to move some of these around. We can drag and drop and rearrange them. The last week, we actually want an, an additional quiz. It's going to be the final exam. Maybe you want to move this other quiz up a little bit higher. But this is a, um, at this point, this is an outline of what you're creating. Once you have that outline created, you can come here to add modules to course and it's creating all of those pages with the templates already there. So this is the part that would take us hours to a couple of days to create, and now you can see it's creating the all in one step. It's gonna push all of those templates out, and then when we go to the modules page, once this is done, seven years later, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I exaggerate sometimes, hyperbole. <laughs> 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 no, but then you can see you'll have um, all of your weeks here. So if your faculty member decides they want to add in an additional assignment, they're able to come in here and tweak all of these weeks quickly and easily right here just by adding those in with, with templates if they want to. Um, you can also set up, if you use the indentation feature in the modules page, you'll have that. But now if we go to the modules, you'll see you have one through weeks one through three already created. If we go to the week one overview, you'll see how it has that already pulled in for you, ready to enter the content. Can you go back to the other page, sure. Okay. Is there a way to, to publish everything all at once, or do you still have to click every single thing to publish it? So, you know what yes, about I know. Is? Yeah. So um, I'm talking about reducing clicks, how to sit there and click. Right, yeah. like, right. Every thing. That's a really good question. I actually haven't you go had. Of course. Yeah, if you just, if you click the week one right there, it'll publish all of them. Okay, all right. So just, it's just by module. Now okay. the problem is, is if, <clears throat> if you unpublish the module, but still have the, like the assignment over here, assignments open, uh, it will have them listed, but you know, yeah. not. So you have to, to unpublish, you have to click everything. I guess that's what I was, I remember there's a thing, like when you want, um, if you publish something too early and then you want to unpublish it, it's just annoying. Yeah, so if you publish the module too early and then you want to unpublish all the assignments in that module, then you have to unclick everything. Everything. That's the, the one part, yeah. Now, if you accidentally create a module and um, it ends up being, um, you, it's a duplicated module, there's an easy button to push instead of having to delete all of those individual items within your course you can delete the module and all contents. So that's on the, the module builder too, which the internet broke. So. <laughs> um, let's see what else can I show you here. So if we, go, if we go to the module builder and look at week one, you can see where you can just delete the module, which would leave all the contents, or you can delete the module and all the contents from the course. Yeah. So you were talking about cleaning up files too. You mentioned you have a, a ton of junk files. If we go, if we have tidy up, I'm just going to activate that really quick. So tidy up is uh, one of our three new products. Design Plus is our flagship, right? And then we've launched tidy up, which is a file and course cleanup tool. Uh, you do it cloud, which is um, the hosted version of the University of Central Florida You Do It tool, and then um, and then uh, and, I, and ready to go. And ready to go is um, the course tracking system uh, readiness for instructional design teams. So, like bigger institutions, right? Utah State University has something like eleven instructional designers and courses they're all building, and so there's some there's some tracking mechanisms to let you know, like if. Uh, if a course has students added, or if it has a syllabus in it uh, using the Canvas API. So with the tidy up, it's going to scan all of the files in this course and look to see if they're linked anywhere within the course, like on module pages or um, anywhere else. It's going to report back a list of all the files that aren't being used. So if you've had, um, if you've had an instructor that's been teaching this course since 2014 and they just have stuff that's accumulated over time that needs to be cleared out or maybe you have a course that's gone through four different 
instructors and the, the newest instructor doesn't know what's active, this will tell them um, what isn't being used in this course. They can hover over this and get additional information on each of those individual files, but if they just want, they can click them and select them individually, or they can select all and delete them from the course. Now there is the option to download, um, uh, download selected so that if you're afraid you might be getting rid of something that is being used, that'll save you a zip file so you still have access to that. This um, is something we recommend um, the instructional designers and faculty work together on, right? So, I mean, and you would... As it depends on designer, the institution. Yeah, mm -hmm. You might be hesitant to, to go in and delete a bunch of files, um, but you can also teach your faculty how to do that. Mm -hmm. With the folders, as you delete things, you're gonna end up with empty folders, so they can clear those out. But they can also take a look at their all of their Canvas content. So if they wanna see everything that's in, that co in the course, maybe there's a bunch of, um, let's see, pages that are sitting in that course, but they're not sure if they're linked to in modules. They can look at those pages and see if they're published or if it even has content on it and delete those, out those individual pieces too. So this was, the reason this came about was at Utah State, we'd have um, a student that needed accessibility accommodations come into a course and the, uh, the faculty member would be alerted to that, that they needed to make the sure their course was accessible. One of those pieces is making sure all your files are accessible. So um, they get into a course where there was hundreds of files and not know which ones needed to be remediated. So this gave them a, a better overview of what was in that course and what actually needed to be updated for those students. And for our 1500 courses, this is where we're going to go with the, this uh, tidy up and then also the, the ready go uh, because we have 1500 courses for online school and there's only four of us that take care of all those 1500 courses in terms of helping figure out what's going on with them. So we, we need this <coughs> so our staff members, since we're a different model, we're our, all of our faculty members actually go to the students' houses twice a week, twice a month. So they don't have the time to get into the content sometimes or figure out what's going on. So we're going to use these things to help speed up the process of finding <coughs> files that are wrong or what's going on, where's this file, or what is this, uh, you know, uh, content and pages and things like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a very simple tool, but very powerful. It, very fun. It's fun to use. Saving all that junk just disappear. <laughs> Not junk. <laughs> no. Extraneous material. <laughs> yeah. Do uh, you want to see, uh, Jackie, we, you use tables a lot. You want to see accessible tables? Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh. No, that's okay. <laughs> no, no. No? I, mean, I understand that. All right. That's <laughs> yeah, on my phone. All right. All right. So I can show you some of the basic styling Jackie, features. Jackie, we're going to see actually <laughs> All right, so some of the basic design features and uh, the, the tools for your tables are available at the basic level. So there's three different levels with design tools. As you become more comfortable, you can turn on the advanced levels that allow you to add in a lot more features. This is something we train you to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. there is a, uh, a implementation training fee that's paid in year one that includes two 90-minute functional user trainings and uh, one 60-minute admin training that we host weekly and then uh, record and share with you after the fact so that you can refer back to those. There's also a user guide on Canvas um, and also an admin guide. When we teach those trainings, Michelle uh, and Kenneth both teach them and um, it's sort of like, you know, uh, drinking out of a fire hose. So you you learn all of the things at once and then you go back over and, um, and, and practice them. You'll know, at least know that you saw it somewhere in a training and you yes. can access it again. That's what, that was our experience too. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and we, but you know, the, the help guide, all those things was, was amazing. And we could always reach out to Kenneth or <clears throat> Jacoba at first now Michelle. Mm -hmm. So definitely something that we need to be used over time. So you're still going to add in tables the same way. You're going to come up here to the native tool to add those in. But in the past, faculty members would get super frustrated because they'd spend hours trying to set up the, the column or row or cell properties and scopes um, for each individual piece. But now with the tools, once you have all of your data in the table, all you need to do is click anywhere within the table, come into customize the style, 
sorry, I have this on some advanced tools right now, but you can set the head row for that table. If you want a head column on the left-hand column, you can do that. This particular table has a total row, so we can set a foot row. We can make it alphanumerically sortable, and we can add in a table caption, and all of those are completely accessible features. Um, you can also give it some styling, so if you want it to look a little bit more cleaned up and professional, there's if you want your students to be able to track where they're at, there's a hovering feature, there's the alternating grayscale background. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do to make those tables look a little bit more professional and accessible very easily. A foot row? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, no, like oh. the comment at the bottom. Uh, the table caption is the comment at the bottom. Right? Well, there is a table caption, but that's at the top. Oh, yeah, you're right. No, but that's that's um, something that we should tuck in. I, I usually put a note at the bottom of my schedule that you know, Let me mention that to him. And that's the other good thing is, is we, you know, you, you can email Kenneth and he's working on a lot of things and yeah. always adding more stuff to it. And uh, <coughs> since we've come on, there's been a lot of things added on since April 2018. And it's the, these kind of things that come up. Like, yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, we need that. Yeah, there's a he, he spends a lot of time answering uh, user requests. Yes. Uh, that's something that you can submit um, in the tool itself. You can also submit a bug report if you run into something. You can also access the help guide through um, the sidebar. Uh, but yeah, so Kenneth Larson is uh, the developer of the tool. He is still with Utah State University. Uh, we are a, a spin out with that technology, right? Um, and so that's how the company sort of came about. The way the tools came about was that Kenneth was working on his uh, master's degree in instructional design and was frustrated with the way Canvas was working and, and so he uh, hacked it and that's what happened. He had a background in web design yeah, so, so he wanted like, things to be pretty and, and fixed it. So, so yeah, yeah that's what, what and, and then you know they built the tidy up tool later on at Utah State University for a different purpose and they also built um, Ready Go for another purpose after he saw uh, his supervisor working on a spreadsheet that didn't make any sense and so um there are always things that that come up and then he'll be like oh yeah and no, i'll never think about that and then three or four days later it just exists so um that's one of the it's really exciting and he's really responsive so anyway he's a real person <laughs> so uh if you want to edit images it's really easy too so there's some tools to do that if you want to add in alt text for an image if you, let's say we want to make this a bit smaller, maybe we want this to be 200 and we want to wrap um, text around it, um, maybe we want to make it rounded. So there's a lot of features that are built in here to make it really easy to style your and content. That sort of image, if you click that, then it doesn't look at as um, uh, accessibility. So that's where you change the accessibility picture between the one that is supposed to be looked at and one that's not. Um, <coughs> That's on my mind because yesterday I went and visited a visually impaired student in their house to help them get set up on printing and variety of things. So that's why I'm on that uh, train right now. Uh. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's also some uh, tools to change your links into buttons. So if you want your, your links to open in new tabs, if you want them to show if they've been visited or not, maybe you have a lot of links within your course that you want your students to be able to track what they've actually looked at. Um, you can give links an icon, you can but change. this is browser specific, right? So like if, right. if students visit on one computer and then they go to a different one, yeah. doesn't, right. it, doesn't, it doesn't remember that because again, we don't touch student data at all. Yeah. Um, let's say uh, the other really great feature for accessibility is the, the color here. So you can see that this meets the WCAG 2.0. Um, so it's telling you that the contrast is, is good for that. If we were to change the background color here to a, um, let's see, maybe a dark blue or something, it's going to change the, the text here. So depending on what the background color is, it's going to check, change the text to black or white to make sure that you have the best contrast available. Um, when you start, it also tell you if you're trying to change the text color to something else, maybe something like this. It'll show you if you if that contrast is failing, so that you you know if you need to change that or not. 
Anything else that you think would be handy, Ryan? Or anything else any you'd like to see? I can um, easily set up a sandbox account. I sent one up for uh, Jackie yesterday, and so um, Tanya, I'll get yours today. But I'm happy to set up a sandbox account where you can go in and play around in, in this environment um, on our on our instance. Uh, and again, like you know, um, it's a ton of training. So like, there's a course in in the in the sandbox that helps sort of navigate initially. Uh, but then you know, remember the best way to see them is. Um, and learn everything is, is later on. Yeah. And uh, for our school, it, it's definitely helped out uh, alleviate a lot of things. And uh, we were trying to think of ways to, to do it. And there was, it was either make it ourselves through HTML coding, uh, but we found them and, and it allows us, because we have the buttons, but it was coding that I was sharing with all the staff members, and they had no idea how to always make that that button there, and if it broke, then I'd be able to fix it. Through this, it's just a nice, easy way to, to do it, because it uses HTML, but they don't have to know HTML to do it. And that's, that was a big key for us, because we didn't have to train our staff to to, go, to code. <laughs> it already does it for them. I should mention also that um, when we set up an institution, right, we, have, we give you a, a primary customizations option, right? So you have the ability to customize uh, at, at the institutional level. But often, there are uh, various departments or programs that have their own look and feel, and they want to make sure that their uh, courses look like they come from the English department, for example. Uh, so then there's an extended customization so that we can um, add to an account so that you can customize based on um, sub-accounts as well. So. Any questions? Was anyone considering you do it? Do you want to see that also? Do you, well, what is, what is you do it? So you do it is out of the University of Central Florida. It's still an open source um, project for accessibility. But um, what, for them, uh, institutions have to house it themselves, which means you have to update the code, keep, keep track of that, and find a place to, to uh, store it. So we've started hosting it uh, on our side so the institutions can use it cloud-based instead. So it checks through things like um, alt text, um, heading text, captions for videos, and it gives you a report letting you know what those issues are. And it gives you the ability to do that right within Canvas. And most of the features also have a you fix it. Can I just run it and show them? It's sure. Like, it's so, so as you know, eating an elephant is one bite at a time, right? And so teaching people about accessibility is also one bite at a time, and it takes um, it takes some patience, and also it uh, can be really frustrating to faculty who who don't realize that they're not creating accessible content, right? They're like, oh, I didn't even know, and then it's not. It's a teaching moment for us. So uh, with you do a cloud, uh, it's an, it's uh, it scans courses and then um, and then gives them this report and. The University of Central Florida, when when they work, uh, when they you know taught us how to use it and, and um, gave us the opportunity to host it for them, they gave us some recommendations, right? Like so, so uh, sit down with faculty and have them only scan pages, for example, instead of all of the things, and and then there are reports and they can sort of see how they've improved over time. Um, so you can encourage them to do that. So. So it's more of a teaching tool for faculty so they're less apt to make these mistakes in the future because they are learning as they're going through these reports and fixing items. So I ran the, I ran the course scanner and it's telling us we have 26 errors in this course, 112 suggestions. So these are things that you might not have to fix, um, but the errors are definitely things that you want to take a look at, such as no closed captioning found on videos, links should contain text, make sure those tables are accessible. As we scroll down, it'll t it'll um, lay out every page for you where there are issues. So you can see this particular page has six suggestions. If we come down here to this error, we can look at this page and you can see no closed captions were found for this particular video. And it'll link you right to that video so that you can make any changes needed. Um, for this one, this link, the links on this page don't contain text. So you can click on this um, view the source and see what that link was and fix it right from um, right from this course that's created for you in Canvas. 
so it makes it really easy. You don't have to, to leave your cam, you don't have to leave your course at all. It links directly to those pieces that need to be fixed and allows you to fix right from this page. So that also is included in the sandbox account. When I set it up, if it's an LTI tool, you'll just have to turn it on in the sidebar. So, okay. Okay. Any questions? I didn't get your name now. I'm sorry, I'm just Nice to meet you, Jacoba. From you which college? Chemeketa. Okay. You're like the third largest in the state, right? Mm -hmm. You're like the third largest community college in the state, I think, Bruce told uh, me. We fight with uh, <laughs> Lane all the time. It's second and third, so I don't know Hunger <laughs> Games. Okay, so it's <laughs> one of the top. Yeah, CCC is always first. Okay. Chemeketa was in Salem. Mm-hmm. Well, I like the fact that this is not only easy to because I just see it as a for me. Yes. Yeah, that's you. It's been staff. It ends up looking at this going like, oh my God, how much time? Like, I just set a week aside before classes start to make every single time the yeah. course is set up. It allows you to focus on your content. I know. Yeah, and that's I also like the accessibility. I had a student with a 100% visual impairment three years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she came into my office, and I had to listen to her listen to the screen reader, and yeah. that changed my teaching practice oh, yes. in a minute. Yeah. Because I said, I don't even understand how you can navigate this. Yeah. Because it's with, with what the screen reader is reading out the URLs for links. It's exactly right. It's insane. And yes. So it was like, okay, we're fixing this now. Yeah, and that's what, you know, the adoption, yes, it was great for the students and parents yeah. for us, but it was also that huge time saver for the staff that we adopted it. Because they, they do the same thing. There were some, you know, that had 19 different courses they needed to set up at, at, in August. You're welcome. And so they, they uh, they wanted to do they you know all those things to save that time and it was you know that's the way it went so so yeah. I have a sandbox and I opened it up and so what do I I need to now import some of my course content from one of my real real courses mm -hmm. yep okay um, into the sandbox and I can play with it on the sandbox uh -huh. to work with there okay so I'll take it I will do that <laughs> yes and uh, just remember that you just turn on. Um, the LTI tools, so the multi-tool will be over in the navigation, okay. and then also yeah, you, you can turn on... I'll go back, um, there's a state board meeting that I was planning on going to work with so I'll go do that to make sure I have it on the okay. Yeah, we're here. Okay. Yeah, right I know then. our experience is a, you know, K-12 is slightly different than what you'll get in higher ed, but it, it'll definitely save the time. Yeah. At least that's what we experience. That's the hope, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, yep. We've had designers, uh, instructional designers, who start using the tool and they say, oh, so this actually lets me do my job as an instructional designer, not not be a, a graphic designer anymore. Mm -hmm. So yes. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for Thank you. listening. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Sorry, my nose quick. I told you I get all my questions. I know it was really I love quick. it. Sorry. Yeah, it works out perfectly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. It wasn't a sales pitch, it was more or less go. show. Faster, yes. Yeah. But it's good to start with somebody that experienced it. Do you mind if I follow up with you on an email and um, set you up a sandbox account? Okay, I can do that. I saw your. Um, information on the registration or something. So, yeah. I can find you. Don't even worry. Yeah, exactly. I'm asking for the easy Yeah. Uh, yeah. Three years ago. Four years ago. And my wife is trying to get me to Yeah, my wife, yeah. But even, even with mine, though, you know, that was
So that's the one thing we're going to have, because you know, we have to tell courses we have to maintain. We're going to do that too, but wait a minute, this isn't published, why isn't this published? Well, we're going to publish it. And so we publish it from there. And then, so that's why I want to be back on the because that's the 